If you're looking to become irreplaceable at your job with AI, then this video is for you. Whether you're an employee or whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're aspiring to be an entrepreneur, I've definitely put this video together for you. Now, uh, with my software engineering background and as a founder of an AI company, I've spent the last two years obsessing, thinking, exploring how I can use AI to level up my work, to get more done with less. And all of this two years I've spent, I've condensed all everything that I've learned into this video so that you can learn everything that I've learned in this next uh, few minutes that I'll be sharing all of this insights with you. And the goal of this video is to help you become irreplaceable at your job using AI. So let's get started. And by the way, if you stay with me to the end of this video, I have a surprise bonus hack for you that you definitely don't want to miss. So stick around with me to the end of this video so I can share that hack with you. All right, let's get started. So just like taxes and death, change is a constant. You've probably heard that term before. We are in the middle of a huge, massive change with AI. And just like the internet, AI is radically changing the way we walk, the way we live, the way we do every single thing in our lives, which is exciting. Now, a lot of people are afraid, and rightly so. I can understand why people are afraid, because they are thinking that AI will take away their job. But the interesting insight and interesting thing is that AI in of itself won't actually take away your job. Or if you're an entrepreneur, AI won't be the death of your business. But somebody who is leveraging and using AI that's the person you should be worried about. That's who will take away your job. That's who outcompetes you and you know, force your business to shut down. Now, the interesting thing is that I will be guiding you today from your transition from being an AI beginner to being proficient without the overwhelm and the complexity. I'm going to condense all of the learnings over the last two years as someone who is on the front line building software, exploring, tinkering. I'm going to condense all of those knowledge so that you can take advantage of my last two years of obsession about AI and how you can use it to level up your workflow. So who is David Oasi? Who am I? Well, I'm the founder of a company called Our Genius. We are an AI company. We're in the market intelligence space to be specific. And our market intelligence software, which I'll show you a little bit more about as we chat, uh, our market intelligence software helps sales teams to close deals three times faster without the complexity, without the overwhelm. That's what we do. And if you like what you're hearing today, you definitely want to stick around and subscribe so that you can hear more about all of the things that I've been learning and how it can be helpful for you in your business and in your work. So today we're going to cover a couple of things. The first one is explaining AI at a very simple and fundamental level. So AI simply explained. We're also going to talk about some problem scenarios and solutions based on real life problems that I've heard people like yourself have and want to use AI to optimize and solve. So we're going to talk about a few of those problem scenarios and solutions to them. We're also going to talk about some schools of thought. How are people thinking about AI? I get lots of DMs, uh, people asking different questions about AI and sharing with me their perspective. And I've broken and categorized them into four buckets. And I'm going to be sharing with you those four buckets. And then if you stay around to the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you that bonus hack, which you definitely don't want to miss because it's really mind blowing and a game changer. So let's talk about AI at its most simple and elemental form. AI really is a technology that enables machines to mimic human thinking and learning abilities. The reason why we as humans are at the top of the food chain is because we have the ability to think and learn from our mistakes and get better over time. That's what really has spurred the innovation and the growth of the human race since memorial. And that's what differentiates us from the animals. And that's why we're at the top of the food apex. And AI is basically designed to mimic that exact skill, being able to think and learn and improve. And when you think about AI, it's broken down into two fundamental things, algorithms and machine learning. So what's algorithm? Well, algorithms are a set of complex instructions that AI uses to make decisions or a computer uses to make decisions. And machine learning is really a system that improves its performance, performance by learning from past results. And that's really what AI really is, combining algorithms, this set of instructions, and machine learning to keep improving. That's really what AI is. Let's give an analogy. Imagine algorithms to be recipes in a cookbook, right? And machine learning is a chef who learns from each cooking experience and tweaks the recipe over and over again for better taste. That's really what AI really is doing. 
It's learning from a set of instructions and it's then going over the results from those instructions and tweaking and improving so it can become better and better. And that's really what AI fundamentally is. So machine learning adjusts algorithms for improved outcomes. And you know, algorithms in machine of machine learning and machine learning is improving and optimizing the algorithms and is this cyclical loop of you know, improvement over and over again. Now, if you're not aware already, but AI is already existing in our everyday lives. We are already using AI. I know the last two years with ChatGPT coming into play has really made everyone even more aware of how AI can change the game for them. But AI has already been existent in our lives already. For example, voice assistants like Siri and Alexa, they respond to your voice command. That is really AI working and doing that. Netflix system that's predicting your next binge watch, I'm a huge Netflix fan, that is really AI is learning about your likes, what you prefer, and is giving you suggestions based on that. That is really AI at work. And even Google Maps providing real-time route suggestions, that is again AI at work. And Facebook also automatically recognizing and tagging friends in your photos. Again, those are AI at work. And again, as you can see here, AI is not this scary monster. It's something that is here. It's a tool to help us. And I'm really on a mission to help you make the most so that you can become irreplaceable at your job with AI, whether you're an employee or whether you're a business owner. And by the way, if you're liking what you're hearing so far, you want to click on that like button and subscribe to this channel because that's what I'm obsessed about, helping you level up your skills in AI. And not just from anybody, but someone who is on the front line, who is building some of the most complex software. And I will share with you in a minute here. And I'm sharing all of those from really building and having practical hands-on experience with AI. And I want to bring all of that knowledge to you. So definitely want to subscribe because I'm creating more content like this. All right, let's talk about some problem scenarios. So we're going to talk about some scenarios that real business owners or employees will face and how AI can actually help you solve those problems and solutions. The first one we're going to talk about is communication overload. There's so much coming at you in your inbox, in your DMs, team meetings. There's so many communication and information that you have to keep track and take care of. And you know, you're overwhelmed with the sheer volume of these emails and messages, which is leading to miscommunication and a reduction in productivity. We wanna fix that. So I'm gonna to suggest two tools that will help you to get ahead of this communication overload. The first one is sanebox.com and the second one is fathom.video. So sanebox.com is really uh, a software that removes unimportant emails from your inbox. And more importantly, it allows you to train the AI from this system so you can send certain emails to trash. Emails that do not fit your criteria, you can send those to trash. Isn't that amazing? Almost like your personal assistant who understands your likes and your dislikes walking through the 4 7 to clean your inbox so that when you go into your inbox, you're only seeing what is most important to you based on the training you're given the AI. And it also even notifies you when a sent email wasn't responded to, so you know when to follow up and when to nurse that prospect or you know that person you want to get you know their attention and response from. So really powerful tool that allows you to manage the communication in your inbox. The next one I'm gonna share with you is something called Fathom.video. So what Fathom.video does really is um, it allows you to record, transcribe, and summarize your meetings. And this is an example of me using it in my own calls. I use this all the time. And as you can see here, it provides a summary breakdown of what the meeting was based on the transcripts. And then it gives me the key takeaways. It tells me everything that went, that happened in that call, all the activities, and I have all of that summarized in one place. It even identifies key insights, like words that were used, the length of time each person spoke, and you know, it gives me all of that. So if I was speaking too much in a call, I can use this software as a feedback to say maybe I should be holding back in my next call so that I'm not talking as much and the customer is actually talking. And that allows you to have that sort of feedback to improve your calls. And the beautiful thing is that it's easily integrated with Zoom. So you, when you go into your Zoom calls, it just comes along into the Zoom calls and allows you to have uh, you know, uh, easy conversations so that you can focus on what the person is saying, not trying to you know, scribble notes and pick up. So this is an amazing tool. I use it myself, myself personally. It's amazing. It's a game changer. You definitely want to take it out. Uh, you want to use this. And the beautiful thing is that it's also free to use. So you don't even have to pay for it to try it out. The next problem we're going to be talking about is in market research and intelligence gathering. 
Now, as a, you know, a marketing uh, person, you know, I, I love marketing. I, and uh, I initially started out as a marketing agency owner before we moved into software. But you know, one of the problems and challenges is that for you to get the attention of the person you want to sell to, you have to spend countless hours researching trying to find out the key information about them so that you can then personalize your outreach to them and you know get their attention because they're you know people are very busy they've got all sorts of people trying to get their attention for you to get their attention you got to personalize your outreach and the problem with doing that is that it's detracting you if you spend all your time doing research it's taking you away from what actually makes you money which is selling which is talking to the customer and you know there are certain tools that are ai powered that i will show you that can help you solve this problem very very quickly and efficiently at scale so the first one is outreach news on ai which is our company because we're a market research and intelligence company in software and then the other one is crayon.co so let's dive in so outreachgenius.ai is really a software is the world's first ai software for real-time individual b2b prospecting intelligence and it instantly generates call cards, generates icebreakers, and personalized email and LinkedIn outreach sequences. Now, let me give you some quick background about Outreach Genius. The reason why we built the software, why I built the software, is because when we were running marketing campaigns for our clients, one of the things they told us was they wanted more comprehensive intelligence about their prospects so that they can stand out when reaching out to their prospect. But the problem is that, you know, for you to get this comprehensive intelligence, you have to go on Google and then try and find, you know, all the information possible about this person what podcast were they on what press mention did they have you know what blog did they have where they mentioned on and that really takes a lot of time so what we did was we went and built the software that uses ai to do all of these at scale very efficiently so let me show you what that actually looks like so you can see it in real time if you go by the way all of this you know outreachgenius.ai for you to access all of uh, our tools but if you go to outreachgenius.ai so let's just zoom that you know i'm trying to reach out to uh this person here called gloria thon so this is gloria's linkedin profile she's an amazing person and i'm trying to reach out to her but i want to know everything possible about gloria so that i can then personalize my outreach to her so this is what's happening behind the scenes with our software the software basically when you put in gloria's linkedin profile you tell us what category of information you're looking for web pages news videos images podcasts awards fundraise all of that information and then of course we get what our software then do is it goes into LinkedIn and it takes what we know to be true about Gloria, which is her image and you know the context about her. Where does she live? You know, what kind of job does she have? We have a good understanding of who Gloria is. And then we then go into the jungle of the internet and we say, Google, find us all the possible information about Gloria. And as you can see here, Google gives us some information. And a lot of this information are relevant, but also, as you know, there are lots of people who are named Gloria who are not actually the Gloria one. They just share the same name. That is kind of where the AI becomes very interesting. And what our AI will do is it will go and find anywhere on the web that we have Gloria from, and then it will use the image and say, does the image on this web page fit the image of what we know to be Gloria? And then it matches that. And that's where you can see, you know, the match here is that yes, this is Gloria's LinkedIn profile. So there's a fit here and the confidence level is 52%. And it's basically basing that on a few things, basing that on, you know, was there an image match? Was there a title match? Was there a description match? Was there a context match? And it's using all of this in the background to then score and give a confidence rating of 52%. And this is very much likely to be Gloria. Same thing again, as you can see here, we've got lots of other links, got lots of other links that we've seen about Gloria on the internet. And then we're also able to extract all of the information once we have a match and we're able to extract that web content about Gloria. And then we store that internally to then create more insight, which I will show you about in, show you in a minute. And as you can see, we have this over and over again, all the web pages information that when I Google Gloria, I'm seeing that. But then there's sometimes that things are not a match. So for example, this person is called Gloria Trevi. So definitely not our Gloria. So definitely we don't want to, you know, consider this person. I can see the confidence score here is 36%. Same thing here, this is under Gloria. Same thing here, this is under Gloria again. So not a match for what we're looking for. Not a match, not a match, not a match. All true here, not a match. And if we go into, you know, the video and the audio, again, all of these are not a match. And then we can find where there is a match and see, there you go. A winning page this is a Winnipeg Free Press article, and there is a match here because this is obviously a picture of Gloria, and it's a hundred percent confidence score. So that is a match. Now this one here is Gloria Thomas, 
Very, very similar in name, but not our glory. As you can see here, it says it's a match because the name is correct, but the confidence is less than 50%. So this is not the kind of glory we're looking for. And But you can see here, this is actually the glory we're looking for. It says it's a match and then it's a 100% confidence. So again, this is how our AI will help in getting that intelligent. But the question is, how do we then take this information to generate something actionable and useful to you? And this is kind of what we do. We create something called a scorecard where we take all of that information to provide more context. And we're able to provide general information and summary. We are also able to provide the relevant score. How relevant is Gloria to your offer as a, as a, as a person trying to reach out to them? And then engagement probability. How likely is she going to engage with you? And then star power. What is Gloria's star power in our industry? How many connections does she have? How many news missions does she have? How many podcast appearances does she have? How many awards has she got it? And we provide a badge so you can understand that. And then also we provide personality insights as well, you know, uh, you know, based on disk profile analysis, MBTI, and Enneagram types. Again, very deep information about Gloria. And then we also provide some custom outreach suggestions. How is a Gloria preferred to be communicated based on all the publicly available information we know about her? And then also we provide icebreaker suggestions as well. So this is how Outreach Genius, we are able to provide top of the line market intelligence in real time based on what you can find on Google about somebody and we do this at scale. And that is not an exciting breakthrough for how we use an AI to support business owners in, in the marketing. So here is the next uh, market intelligence software we're gonna go over. This one is called Crayon.co. And Crayon.co really tracks your competitors' website changes and social media updates. So how different Crayon.co to Outreachiness is that Crayon.co is focused more on organization insights, where Outreachiness is more focused on individual insights. And Crayon.co will track things like, you know, if your competitor is making a new acquisition or, you know, they are, they're changing their pricing or something at an organization level, those are the intelligence that they track. And also, they will also provide insight into industry movement, consumer behaviors, emerging trends, and they will provide a customizable, intelligent dashboard and feed. So very, very interesting use case of how they use AI to provide all those high level information at an organization level that you can then use to then you know, take action in your own business. So an amazing tool and amazing software. Let's talk about a different problem scenario. We're going to talk about customer service responses. So if, you know, if you're an employee in the customer service department, you probably struggle with efficiently handling high volumes of customer inquiries due to the need to reference and analyze extensive documentation. So perhaps you have like this long documentation of all the processes for different types of questions. That's a lot of things to try and memorize. And a tool called chatwithpdf.com can actually allow and help you to do that and navigate that more efficiently and effectively. So the way chat PDF uh, works is that you will upload a PDF of SOPs or policies, whatever it is you want the AI to to help you in you know, analyzing and understanding when you're responding to questions, you will upload that documents here. And then all you then do is you chat with it, like how you will with ChatGPT, you will chat and ask your questions. And you will also get instant answers. So for example, here I said, give me a high level summary of this document that I uploaded. And it gave me a high level summary to help me understand what that document is. And then I can then chat back and forth you know, to try to understand what it's trying to, what the document entails, different specific questions. And they will give me answers as long as the answers are in that specific document. So this is an extremely powerful way to be able to get through more questions real quickly without the complexity and the overwhelm. I hope those uh, three problem scenarios have been helpful in you seeing how AI can actually help you in your workflow. And if you like, if you felt those were very helpful, uh, definitely let me know in the chat, in the comments. And if you want to see me going through different types of problem scenarios, let me know in the comments so I can make another video that will go through tools that can help you in specific scenarios. Now let's talk about some schools of thought. So as I you know, get a lot of DMs, people talking to me about AI in my DMs, I find that there are four categories that people, ways people think about AI. Four schools of thought, four ways people think about AI. The first one is a, is a Terminator fanatic. So you probably heard of the reference that the Terminators are gonna take over, they're gonna destroy us, and AI is gonna, we're gonna reach the singularity. I think that's a reality. I think we're very, very far away from that reality, that's for sure, but that's still a school of thought. And these people are thinking and saying, it's only a matter of time before the ultimate showdown 
between humans and machines. I think that's a reality, but of course, I think that is far away from now. And that's one school of thought. It's a very pessimistic, dark way of thinking about AI. The second school of thought is the utopian guru. This is a school of thought that says intelligent machine will do all of our work and will lead to unimagined wealth and happiness. I like that rosy view of the world. I love that, but hopefully we will get there. But that is a very optimistic view of how AI will impact us. So that's one school of thought. And that school of thought is more the skeptical sloth. This is basically saying, let's be real. Many of us are indifferent to the advancement in AI. And there's the chances that we will just end up binging, uh, binge watching card videos anyways. So again, and that school of thought is saying, people are going to be lazy. They won't take and use AI to increase productivity. It's just going to be another one of those tools that people are going to ignore. I think that's somewhat unrealistic. I think a lot of people are excited about AI, but again, there's still some element of potential truth in that statement, in that viewpoint, and that's another way people view AI. And the last school of thought, which I think is the more realistic view, is the optimist realist. And this is the idea that AI will spur serious productivity gains and wealth but it will only be accessible to those with knowledge. And I think that's really true. And that's why I'm creating this video. I've spent two years learning everything about you know, AI in its current form and really building software in this space. And I wanna help you give you this knowledge so that you can take it to access the productivity gains and the wealth that will come from those who have the knowledge. Ultimately, wealth comes from knowledge. And when you have this knowledge, you're able to build wealth. It's just the reality of things. So if you are interested in building your knowledge with AI, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel because I will be sharing more and more content about how you can use AI to take your career, your business to the next level. And I super, I'm looking forward and excited to share more of this knowledge with you based on what I'm seeing in real time and based on what I'm reading, based on what I'm hearing, based on what I'm thinking and exploring with, I'm gonna bring all of those to you on this channel. So now we come to the bonus hack. The bonus hack is my GPTs. So my GPTs uh, is another tool by OpenAI, but it is different from ChatGPT. So my GPTs and ChatGPTs are completely different things. So I'm going to share with you how uh, they work and how they're different. So my GPTs think of them as like you know mobile apps, but for AI. So mobile apps, but for AI. And my GPTs they have specific purpose and they can access the internet. So that is a game changer because even though ChatGPT in its current form, if you upgrade, if you upgrade to you know, ChatGPT 4, you can access the internet, but there's still a limit to what you can do. There's a limit to the type of data you can access. There's a limit to some of the things you can do. What my GPTs help you do is they help perform specific purposes, just like how when you had apps on your phone back in the day, I mean, apps are still in existence, but people are no longer downloading many apps that these days anymore uh, of my GPT apps that you can use. Uh, the link notes so you can access this. And as you can see, there's all sorts of, you know, different areas from technical assistance, writing, coding, entertainment and fun, education, career, so many different areas that you can leverage my GPTs. These are my GPTs. So there are many areas you can leverage my GPTs uh, apps to upgrade your own productivity. So let's look in the area of, let's say, um technical assistance so this one is called research gpt so it's an ai research assistant that searches over 200 million academic papers and gets science-based answers and drafts content with accurate citations so this is pretty cool so let's test it out and see how it works so once i open it uh i can see here gestures of where i can i can start so write introduction uh, of a paper let's see this one here so it says, write the introduction of a paper on the effect of climate change on GDP. So that is an actual published paper. As you can see, here, it's giving me an answer. So this is really mind blowing because this is like very specific information. And then I can create and say, you know, uh, who were the sources of this paper? And then let's see. Uh, oh, I think I misspelled that, but you still understand that. So. Um, it's so peer reviewed, it's giving me different information about some of the, the people who were you know, responsible for that paper and the data set and economic model. So this is mind blowing. Let's try another example of my GPT. This one is called Bounce Band. So let's try Bounce Band. So what Bounce Band does is it verifies uh, your emails. So the only email verification service that supports verifying catch all emails. So it basically tells you if an email address is correct. So let's try giving it an email address, one that is correct and one that is incorrect. So for example, my email address, if you want to email me actually, is david at aceyourbusinessacademy.com. So this is my email address. So if you, you know, if you have questions about AI, please feel free to email me or uh, message me uh, or uh, respond in the comments. As you can see here, it's saying that my email is 
the withdrawal is deliverable, the score is 99. This email is deliverable with a high confidence score. It's not disposable, not an accept all, and not a rule based address. So it is, a, you know, this gives me all the information I need. Let's give it an email address that is incorrect. So let's just say, um, uh, let's say David at Ace Business Coaches. So this is not correct, right? There's no email, that, there's no domain name that, that has this dot, let's say dot co. So this is not an incorrect email address. Let's see what it says about this one. So as you can see here, it's doing its action. It's talking to the APIs and it says zero score. It tells me that this email is undeliverable. So as you can see here, we have like interesting use case here. We're accessing like a huge database, uh, you know, from here of like, you know, research papers. And we have this one that I just give it, telling me if my email address is correct or not. So these are like just one of the many use cases. As you can see, we got a whole list here. You can go check it out of you know, uh, my GPT apps that does different things for you based on what you need. And there's a comprehensive list. And of course, with you know, um, stores coming out this year, there will be even a much bigger list. So it's an exciting way of leveraging AI. So that's it for this presentation and for this video. I hope that you've taken some value in learning about AI in its fundamental form. We've talked about some problem scenarios, some, some solutions, some software that I love, that I've been using, and one that we are building ourselves. And if you like our software, the one I told you about, AI system that gives in-depth insights, go to outreachiness.ai. We have a free trial that you can use to start, you know, access some of these tools that we've built and of course you know if you like this video if you want more videos like this let me know your thoughts in the comments let me know what kind of videos or content you would like to see in the future again as i can said earlier on i'm at the forefront of ai we're building some very complex ai tools and of course i want to share all of that knowledge all of my findings with you so subscribe to this channel if you want to stay on top of ai so that you can be irreplaceable in your job or your business using ai as a leverage point that's it for this video thank you and we'll see you in the next one